Hi students, myself Dr. C. B. Shoegmat, Professor of Civil Engineering Department, Amruta Institute of Engineering and Management Sciences, Bedidi Bengaluru. I would like to give my brief introduction. I did my B.E. in Civil Engineering from Basaveshwara Engineering College, Bagalkot, M.Tech from IIT Rurki with specialization in Environmental Engineering and Ph.D. from IIT Madras on a topic of wastewater treatment. And I served Basaveshwara Engineering College Bagalkot for nearly 35 years as assistant professor, professor and head of the department, controller of examination and retired as a principal of Basaveshwara Engineering College Bagalkot. So far, I have guided more than 40 M.Tech and uh, 6 PhDs have completed under my guidance in the field of environmental engineering. And uh, I also served as the principal of BV Sangha's Amrita Institute of Engineering and Management Sciences, Bidhi Bengaluru, and now I am professor in that department. So, dear students, we shall start module two of the subject solid waste management. And before actually coming to the module two, I hope by this time you are very much aware about the course outcome of this subject. At the end of this subject, very crucial subject in the present day scenario, you should be able to understand what is solid waste, what are different types of solid waste, what are its characteristics, how to collect, how to transport, manage and also finally environmental safely manner disposal of into a landfill. So, it is highly interdisciplinary subject, one need to have knowledge, proper knowledge of biology, chemistry, mathematics as well as engineering that is very crucial for this subject. And uh, I also at this point of time would like to say how important is this subject in the present day scenario. You would be surprised to know that till 1991, there was no attention in our country as far as solid waste management is concerned. It was in the 1991, Madam Amrita Patel, ah sorry, Almitra Patel, who filed a PIL in Supreme Court for this serious solid waste management problem and finally, Supreme Court came with solid waste management guidelines in the year 1999. That means, the solid waste management implementation, its study and its importance is very recent, hardly it is 20 to 23 years old. I would like to just say how crucial is this subject in the present day scenario. We are in the 21st century. Dear students, the solid waste management problem is purely a man-made problem. Look at the population of, of the world today. It is nearly 7.6 billion. That is 760 crores approximately. And like to to become 9.8 billion by 2050, we can say almost 1000 crores. And if you compare this world population with the population of our country, at the time of the independence in the 1947, our population was hardly 33 crores. Now, in just 75 years, we are nearly 140 crores and likely to become 160 by the year 2048 or 2050 perhaps will be the most populous country 
leaving behind China by 2050. And uh, here is the point that this population is very, very crucial because everything is limited. Dear students, we should also understand this point of time that we are living in this environment that is on the earth. It is only one earth. All the resources are well defined. All the resources are quantified. Whereas on the contrary, the population of the world is increasing. I told just by 2050, the world population may be 1000 and all the sources are limited. Remember, they are limited. So, it is very much important to totally have a different kind of an attitude for the solid waste management. So, what is that attitude? Once you start studying this subject, at the end of the subject, you will feel that it is no longer, solid waste is a no longer a waste material. We have to change our perspective. We have to change our attitude. Look at this solid waste as a solid resource. Once we understand that this solid waste is also resourceful, then total approach of this subject becomes different. So, in this background, I will start coming into the actual syllabus of the module 2 of this subject. Yeah. yeah. So, this is module 2 processing techniques. So, ultimately what is processing? The processing is modifying the solid waste in a such a way that the solid waste management technique becomes easy. So, then this is the course content purpose of processing mechanical volume reduction, mechanical size reduction that is also known as shredding, component separation which can be manual or mechanical and also volume reduction by incineration process and the description of that incineration process. Yeah. So, another important aspect of the solid waste management is functional element. So, we should understand this interrelationship between the various function elements in the solid waste management. What is solid waste? All the waste material produced by the human activities or animal activities and thrown away as a worthless, useless material. But I told population is increasing with a such an alarming rate. At the same time, our life standard has changed. So, these two are very, very important. One may ask me, so whether this was a problem in the earlier days? Yeah, ever since the civilization came into existence, ever since the civilization, no doubt the solid waste, liquid waste are generated in the society. But earlier, our lifestyle was very much simple. Population was very less. As I told, it was hardly 33 crores of our country in the year 1947. Lifestyle was simple and most of the materials used for various human activities were organic in nature. And also you remember, perhaps you might have learned in various subjects like uh, wastewater treatment. This environment or earth has what is known as a self-sustaining capacity, self-digestion capacity. So, whatever different types of waste produced may be into the atmosphere, may be into the water bodies or may be some of the solid waste, most of them are organic in nature and nature has managed on its own and so that still we are serving. Imagine a kind of a situation 
had there been no any self assimilating capacity of this nature the world would have been buried long back in its own wastes okay so now population is more lifestyle is uh, ch change modern lifestyle and the attitude is kind of a consumerism attitude so it is a very complex kind of a scenario then it is to be managed in proper manner how it is to be managed it is to be managed keeping in mind the health of the public economy and overall well being of the society and this subject is very special it includes many aspects it includes environmental aspects obviously economical objects legal offsets and also social uh, aspects so one need to have a broad you know idea of uh, this interrelation of, of management of the solid waste and in that how to manage so the experts have evolved a kind of a uh, procedure or a kind of an approach to manage the solid waste effectively and they have identified these management techniques as functional elements so these includes these include waste generation the waste is generated at individual house how much quantity of waste is generated and at what rate the waste is generated you should have the clear idea after the waste generation ni you know we have to handle this waste at the source itself earlier it was not the case now i hope you also you know uh, in your house and all that you are trying to separate various you know um, food waste and other inorganic waste and putting into different bins and the municipality will be collecting so we have to handle this waste generation at the source of itself so that the further uh processing techniques become easy and effective so after having managed the waste handling at the source itself the next important functional element becomes the collection so this is the collection is the most mainly nowadays is the responsibility of the local body it could be municipality or corporation something like that a collection vehicle depending upon their local condition they use their different techniques and the, all the waste generated uh, is collected from house to house okay so the vehicle will be moving from house to house and they will collect the waste and mostly i think by this time you will be aware that uh, one is uh, mostly organic waste food waste they put into a separate so you know uh, collection vehicle in different compartment and remaining all other waste are put into some other compartment so that ultimately that is taken either to the fourth element separation and processing all to the transfer and transport uh, functional element you see these two are interchangeable so let me say that the after collection the fourth functional element is separation and processing and transformation of the solid waste so i told earlier we have to change our attitude looking at the solid waste it is no longer a waste the modern trend is to say that it is a solid waste resource there are lot of reusable items in the solid waste okay so therefore it is separation here is separation at the individual house even then even then particularly inorganic waste or um, may also contain some other waste like hazardous waste and all those things so it requires further processing at this source so here transformation and pro processing don't get confused by this two words different authors will use a different kind of a terms but by and large the meaning of the both is same processing is also transformation so don't get confused different authors will use a different so whenever i say processing it also means sometimes transformation so here also further transformation takes place and i will be dealing today or in this module the transformation mainly with the physical processes and one important chemical technique i will be discussing here so whatever that remains still after processing there are certain wastes you know 
that can be converted this to transport and transportation or whatever that some solid material which is to be further processed can also be sent to the processing. So, that is why the both are interchangeable and this uh, you know this transfer and transport is also very important uh, uh, functional element after the collection you no know, after the collect collection small vehicles they unload into the bigger vehicles and all the bigger vehicles from the different corners of the city will come to transportation and after that transferring you know that can be transported to here or sometimes uh, yeah here one uh, flow is uh, missing uh, yeah is something like this okay if we feel that after collection earlier this was the case, earlier when uh, we are totally ignorant of its environmental impact, you know uh, after collection it used to take and finally disposal outskirts of the city, they used to dump without any segregation or without any processing that technique. Now it is almost mandatory for each municipality, each corporation or each local body that it is to be handled properly keeping the public health into mind. So, disposal technique is ultimately most of the times it is a landfill. So, thus these six are the most important functional element that is waste generation, I repeat, quantity and the rate at which gener generated. Second functional element, handle the waste at the source itself, at the individual house level or an individual institute level as much as possible separate whatever just possible for you so that further processing becomes easy and the, the collection then transfer or directly we can send it to segregation and here from here one more flow diagram is missing yeah ultimately this was it. so this is the inter inter relationship between the various functional elements in the solid waste manage once you understand this interrelationship between the various that is six function elements of solid waste management, I think as an engineer you will be in a comfortable position to handle this management system, waste management system given an opportunity for you as a civil engineer or environmental engineer. Now we shall come to the discussion on the module 2 of the solid waste management. So, processing techniques. Okay. So, ultimately what is the purpose of processing of the solid waste management? The first and foremost thing is that it will definitely improve the efficiency of the solid waste management system. So, imagine a kind of a situation. Okay if we do not process segregation at the house, it is also a kind of a processing only because you are categorizing the different kinds of the different types of the waste. Imagine a kind of a situation which was happening earlier 2000 in the years or before 2000, you know all the waste was collected and just dumped into the outskirts of the city. And now I told we have to look at that into as a resource possible whatever best possible usable materials, recyclable materials you have to take out of the solid waste that is generated. And if overall system has to become economical and environmental friendly and also efficient obviously we have to do the processing. So, obviously the processing improves the efficiency of the solid waste management system. And second one is recover usable materials. Okay. For me, a little, for example, a little small with a small breakage, I might have thrown a mug or some plastic bottles. In for me, it could be a useless. But those things can be taken back by some other people, and that those people can use. Uh, for example, even we can say the models of TVs are now changing. Okay. 
the old model computers you can also say just do not we never throw into that okay lower versions of computers who can be giving it to the schools and all those or such there are many other materials which can be recovered. So that is why in the bracket I told usable materials are the resources that means these solid waste contains a lot of resources. So the processing techniques if we un understand there is a greater advantage of getting many reusable materials. Okay. To prepare materials for the recovery and conversion products and energy. Yeah. Further as we go into the subject, we will also come to know that some of the recyclable and reusable materials will be recovering, but still there will be many other waste materials left within the solid waste, you know, which we may have to convert into a different product. For example, if I can say all the food material that is collected, okay, that can be composted. So, that compost can be used for agricultural purposes. So, it is known as a conversion product. And what is the energy recovery? There is another way of handling this food waste or in general any organic waste. Can, it can be converted to different product as I told it can be converted into a compost or it can also be converted into a energy form. For example, the classical example is incineration. Okay combustion of the solid waste organic in nature and from that we can recover energy. And also there is a biological process of conversion product like anaerobic digestion of the solid waste that produces methane which is having lot of calorific value and which can be used as a biofuel. So, for all these activities we may require to process it and prepare material and make it suitable for different types of conversion techniques or different types of the processing techniques and thus these are the three main important purposes to improve the efficiency of the overall system, to recover resourceful materials and prepare this materials for energy conversion as well as for getting the conversion product which could be a compost or a biofuel something like that. Okay. So, I told the importance or purpose of the processing techniques. And now we have to handle this waste very scientifically. So, there are different techniques of the processing of the solid waste, physical processing techniques, chemical processing techniques and biological processing techniques. So, as an, an engineer we should be very clear in the concept of these various processing techniques and then only you know the management of solid waste becomes very successful. So, look at this table, transformation I can say processing of the solid waste management, solid waste rather. So, this is a physical transformation or a processing of the solid waste and uh, by what means or what method is given in this column and uh, final products what we can get out of these various processing techniques. Okay. So, coming back coming back to component separation, this can be manual or this can be mechanical separation. And here we will be getting individual components in commingled municipal waste. We call it as a commingled waste which is not segregated properly. So, all the individual at was like glass we can put it separately iron we can put separately, we can put the plastic waste separately. So, each component is separated depending upon its potential for reuse or further processing. So, that is component separation. Then volume reduction. So, same you know we can apply some energy and compress its uh, volume. So, ultimately what we are achieving is original volume of the waste is reduced so that it further becomes economical. In fact, I will be going into the details of all this because the module 2 mainly is physical and one chemical processing technique. And size reduction you know by applying some energy or some mechanical means will just re reduce the size. So, original waste 
is altered in the form and produced in the size. So, these are physical techniques. Okay. So, let me come to next technique. Yeah, chemical technique. See the difference, try to understand the difference between the chemical and physical techniques. In the physical processing techniques, you know, the material property will not change. We will be using some physical means or physical technique to alter its shape or size, maybe its density, but we never change any chemical or biological properties of the solid waste. Okay. And here is a technique, a chemical processing or transformation technique. There are three types, one is combustion, another one is pyrolysis and third one is gasification. So, what are the technique here use? This is nothing but a thermal oxidation, I will explain now and destructive distillation and starved air combustion. It mostly you know uh, this conversion or any techniques that we use in solid waste management, this conversion mostly will be handling the organic fraction of the municipal solid waste. The combustion is thermal oxidation that is simple words burning of the solid waste in presence of the air sufficient quantity of the air. So, end products will be getting carbon dioxide, sulphur dioxide and some ash and maybe some uh, oxidation products. Then uh, this is also chemical technique, this is also thermal technique, it is also known as destructive distillation that means, that means what we do here is that the solid waste management you know, you know or basically organic matter is unstable. It can be thermally cracked and also it can be distilled. So, by doing so, this is also a chemical process, we will get a gas stream containing variety of gases having calorific value and tar and oil also will get and char I will get. However, for the detailed discussion of these techniques is out of scope of this uh, uh, module 2 and uh, it will be, uh, you will be studying in next module. And gasification, you see starved air combustion, that means uh, its burning takes place, uh, we, we, you might have heard uh, about the stoichiometry, okay. any chemical requires you know stoichiometry and uh, the quantity of air here is less than what is required in the chemical stoichiometry. So, what we call the starved air, the air supplied is not sufficient for the burning of the solid waste or combustion of the solid waste. So, it called as a starved air combustion and here you interesting we get a, a low uh, uh, BTU fuel and uh, a char containing carbon dioxide inerts originally in the fuel and pyrolytic oil. So, all the detailed discussion of this particular chemical you know uh, is out of scope of this uh, module 2. Uh, next equally important is biological transformations or biological processing techniques and uh, here um, we classify them into three categories. One is aerobic composting and anaerobic is uh, another is anaerobic digestion and anaerobic composting. So, I will not be going into the details of uh, uh, this as I just told earlier out of scope here. And it is simple, you know, it is a kind of an aerobic biological conversion where we will make use of the aerobic bacteria. And finally, you know, after there is a process proper technique for this, finally we get a compost humus like material which can be very beneficially used as a soil conditioner, thus helping the <coughs> uh, farmer for his agriculture purposes. So, this is the aerobic process there is anaerobic digestion that means the solid waste you know is made a slurry organic fraction of the solid waste is made a slurry and that is put into anaerobical biological conversion. So, anaerobic bacteria will act upon uh, uh, the organic fraction of this slurry of the organic waste 
and interesting we get biogas rich in methane content which can be used as a fuel and also obviously carbon dioxide will be there and digested humus or a sludge will be there which further can be dried and used as a manure. So, and this is anaerobic composting. This is also um, converting the organic fraction of the solid waste into a compost in absence of the air and that also has got a lot of value as a manure or a soil conditioner. So, these are three different techniques of processing. One is physical, chemical, biological. Physical is no change in chemical or biological properties of the waste. Chemical means it is mainly is combustible process. One is sufficient quantity of air, another one is in absence of the air and another one is combustion with a quantity of air supplied less than the stoichiometric requirement. Whereas, biological process it is purely carried out by the microorganism basically bacteria. So, aerobic and anaerobic biogas in anaerobic biological or anaerobic digestion process or compost in the anaerobic composting and also in anaerobic composting. So, these are a different type of techniques of processing of the solid waste. Yeah. Now, we shall go into the details of uh, these uh, physical processing. As I told the physical processing or physical transformation does not involve or does not involve rather change in the face of the solid. That means, we never change solid into a gas or solid into a like unlike in the chemical and biological process. So, as I told material property will not change. So, they remain as it is only volume, size and other things are altered. That means, only physical characteristics it could be a size, it could be a volume or it could be a density are modified and another thing is that you know uh, the similar kind of components glass, paper, wood as per our requirement they are processed and segregated. So, these kind of activities are known as physical processing activities. Yeah. What are the various objectives of the unit operations used in the physical processes? I hope dear students uh, you may be aware of the two important terms in engineering what we use. One is unit operation and another one is unit processes. Unit operations are all engineering techniques where there will be no alteration in the properties of the waste or for that matter any matter. Whereas, unit process is there will be change in a phase. So, what I can say all the physical techniques come under unit operations, all the chemical techniques as well as biological techniques are known as unit process. So, these are two important terms as an environmental engineer you should remember the difference between unit operation and unit process. So, whatever why now we are discussing in the physical transformation or physical trans processing techniques they are known as unit operations right. Okay. As I told the first objective is to modify the physical characteristics of the solid waste. So, that the waste component can be easily removed. Okay. If we modify them, it becomes easy for us to remove them by, by any one of the techniques. It could be manually or making use of some other techniques. Then to remove specific components, you see many times even in the municipal salt waste, it may contain some of the hazardous weights. So, many times we throw you know all our batteries or some such kind of things into a solid waste, it may some of the times even there are a commercial establishment you may be collecting, institution establishment you will be collecting. So, it is quite possible that you know it may also contain a contaminant waste or hazards, identify them and remove them from the mainstream of this municipal solid waste. So, to remove the specific com component, identify them and remove 
from the main waste stream so that further processing becomes easy. Then to produce and to process separated materials for subsequent uses. So whatever you know materials we have collected, uh, prepare them, collect for example, collect all the glass materials separately and process it can be sent for further processing so that further the, all those glass materials can be reused for producing the new glass uh, items. Okay? So these are you know objectives, one is modifying the properties, removing the specific components from the mainstream like hazardous waste and preparing all these separated materials for the subsequent processing depending upon what are your ultimately aim of converting these uh, separated items. Yeah. Again you know the physical processing techniques, <coughs> there are four techniques. So physical processing is not altering the properties will be only modifying the physical properties. This you have to always remember whenever I say physical processing. And all the engineering techniques used to achieve these objectives, they are termed as unit operations. Okay. I told there are different techniques used in the physical processing to achieve the ultimate objectives. The first one is component suppress separation. What is the component separation? It is very simple. It is nothing but process of separating identifiable in individual components from the commingled municipal solid waste by manual or mechanical means. So, I will give an example of a separation technique. So, waste stream is there. You can find their glass pieces, glass bottoms or any item of a glass. You may find similar kind of all the bottles, plastic bottles, plastic pieces. You may also get you know tin items over there. So identify them, okay. identify individually or oh, this is glass, this is paper, this is plastic and identify and we have to separate. So, this is process of separation of identify materials. Okay. What it does? It transforms a heterogeneous waste into number of more or less homogeneous waste. Now, imagine a commingled waste which consists all the varieties of the solid waste except you say food waste I can say. Okay. As I told nowadays, in most places of our state and the country, at least at source we separate uh, food waste and all other waste into some other. So, obviously they are taking. So, imagine a situation it is a heterogeneous mixture of plastic, bottle, paper, wood pieces and what not. So, when we separate individually, there will be a mass of a glass, there will be a mass of wood items, there will be a mass of a paper items, right? there will be a mass of a tin cans, there will be a mass of plastics and all that. So, thus which was earlier a heterogeneous mixture of varieties of the solid waste gen thrown by the society, now we are transforming into a more or less homogeneous component. And now we can understand once the heterogeneous mixture gets converted into homogeneous mixture, then you can think depending upon the quantity of the different items, you can think of further what to do. So, this exactly is what is meant by the component separation. So, what are its applications? Obviously, the first and foremost application is we can recover reusable and recyclable materials. Try to understand, I hope you know the difference. Reusable directly it can be used, recyclable means further processing and it can be used. So, first and foremost application is that in the recovery of the usable and recyclable materials. And second application is in the removal of contaminants from the separated materials. So, still whenever you know you still make homogeneous mixture, still it may contain some of the contaminant items 
and uh, if you remove that also a particular item that will improve the specification or quality of the separated items. And uh, in the removal of hazardous waste from the municipal solid waste already I have uh, just told about it. So, many of the unknowingly or unknowingly will be putting some of the hazardous items also into the solid waste, maybe some institutions also will be there. Earlier hospital waste was hospital solid waste were permitted into the municipal waste. Now it is entirely different aspect because hospital waste management entirely different techniques. So it is no longer permitted to thrown into the general municipal item. But still, you know, at some other places, some of the chemical, some of the hazardous materials may be there, possibly, and you have to remove that from the uh, waste fraction. Otherwise, suppose if you imagine a situation even nothing is segregated at the source and everything is put as a commingled solid waste, then imagine a situation if you want to process the biological waste or food waste for energetic digestion or composting and all that, this hazardous material will be you know very much harmful for the biological processing techniques. So, it is very important uh, application that you can uh, remove the hazardous waste from the municipal solid waste so that furthering any processing technique becomes very easy for us or rather efficient. And where energy are converted here yeah, it is another application as I told earlier also. Uh, we can convert many of the items into an energy and also we can convert many of the solid waste into conversion products. If I take uh, uh, food fraction or biological organic matter, organic what we call technical as organic fraction of the municipal solid waste it can be composted or it can be processed into a biogas through anaerobic digestion and energy means you can burn all the combustible materials in the solid waste and out of that you can also get the energy depending upon the technique. So, these are the important you know applications of the component separation. Yeah. Now, what are the different types of the component separation techniques. As I told we can manually carry out this okay, and we can also carry out mechanically. Manual component separation is one and second one is mechanical component separation. There are three techniques here in the mechanical component separation. One is the screening another one is density separation which is also known as uh, air classification and third one is a magnetic separation. So, these are very important techniques uh, uh, and uh, yeah. So, let me summarize what uh, we have discussed in this uh, first class. I told uh, the kind of scenario in which we are existing and the population increase is going to be a very challenging task for the India particularly because as I told it is going to be nearly 160 crore by the end of the 2040. Lifestyle has changed, resources are limited and we have to look into solid waste as a resource not as a waste. Once our attitude changes as a resource and then we start thinking what to re recover from this solid waste. This is one point. And another point is you should understand the functional elements very pro properly. There are six functional element, element, uh, elements and all those six fun, functional elements you have to clearly understand and also you have to understand clearly the interrelations in between the various functional elements so that your handling of the solid waste or management of the solid waste becomes very effective. This is one. Then what we discussed, what are the different techniques of the processing? processing techniques and uh, you know there are three types physical, chemical and biological okay? and I also told uh, the various uh, uh, techniques in brief about the chemical and biological and uh, we have started discussion on the physical processing of the solid waste in detail. and. Uh, there are two techniques here manual and mechanical which I will be taking in the next class. Thank you.